Okay, I want I wanted to put up another video just to reiterate how important it is to stay focused on conversational skills. All right, this is going to be the greatest challenge, especially when you're reading your language material isn't reliable. All right, when you've got a, it's a do-it-yourselfer. In other words, you've got to go in there and make all the corrections. Right off the bat, if, if you've had any history with language material, you're already suspicious. Okay, so <laughs> let me just put that out there. So, yeah, hey, everyone's trying to sell you something. All right, so the longer they can draw it out, the more money they can get from you. Okay, so you might as well. I might as well just throw that out there, just so you know. Okay, since you're probably going to have to fix it, You're going to need a reliable trans translator. Okay. Now, as a foreigner, you're going to be using a translator anyway. Get over that thing of not you. If you have any problems with using a translator, get over it. Okay. It's like Google Maps. Google Maps, if you're doing any kind of traveling, you're going to use a translator and you're going to use Google Maps. All the flaws and all the challenges involved in it, learn about them because you're going to have to. End of story. All right, just deal with it. So, for the translator thing, all right. Correcting your language material or personalizing it, even if it is correct, personalizing your language material. So you're not uh, wasting too much time, All right? So Google Translate, which is what I would probably have used if it wasn't for the pronunciation thing, Yandex. For pronouncing Russian is number one. It's gonna okay? So yeah. As I've already stated, Yandex doesn't romanize, doesn't change the the lettering. Okay? So, yeah, after the core vocabulary, again, as many mistakes as is in here, I still believe in the concept. Central vocabulary core, and then form your own sentences. Uh, but since you're going to have to fix it up, probably, you know, in the times we're living in, just get over it, if you can manage it, or just deal with it as best you can. Since you're probably going to have to fix it, you're going to need to make yourself a chart. With the Russian letters, all right? All the information's out there, all over the book. I mean, there's tons of it. Just um, you can actually uh, just take this and 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 uh, you know, screen put a screenshot of that, whatever. Oh, but that's going to be that backwards, isn't it? Anyway. 
what I've basically done is wrote, written, I wrote down the, uh, the alphabet, put a little arrow there, and put what it sounds like. Okay? So I need to use that to be able to use Yandex effectively. So, beyond just, just forcing yourself to stay focused so you can get a handle on the conversational skills, focus, just force yourself to stay focused on the conversational skills, too easy to get distracted, oh, really too easy, so, yeah. Record vocabulary list. All right. Um, yeah, the prepositions. Of course, prepositions are going to be included in here, but don't get too hung up on prepositions because you can never translate. <laughs> You're never going to get the prepositions right, okay? If you've ever dealt with any kind of foreigner, you know, forget about the prepositions. Stick in just about any kind of preposition because you're never going to get it right, ever, ever. Every language uses prepositions their own way. It's never going to be the same. You're never going to get it right, so you might as well just get over it. Really, just, just stick any preposition in there. It doesn't even matter because it's going to be wrong. So you say at instead of of. You, 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 you say well, whatever the heck it is, you're always going to be wrong. So don't worry about it. Uh, you know, you get the, the noun right, get the verb right. Don't even worry about past or present, okay? Just just get the noun right, get the verb right. Throw it out there. The prepositions, they're always going to be wrong. So use the, the preposition you would use and, and pick whatever Yandex happens to throw. It doesn't matter, you're going to be wrong. Alright. Just get the verb right, get the and, and the get the noun and the verb right. Pronounce it correctly, and the native speaker will be able to figure it out, okay? I mean, you're interacting with them, so there's only a limited amount of things you're going to be talking about. Okay? So, yeah. Beyond that, the core vocabulary. Okay, I like to say top 25, whether it's top 25 words or phrases you're going to be using. Yeah, the thing of it is, everyone's going to have a different top 25. See, I mentioned this because you really need to, to get that core vocabulary list. All right. Present tense. Don't worry about the prepositions. You're going to be wrong. Get the pronunciation as close as you can. Get the noun right. Get the verb right. The native speaker will be able to figure it out. All right. So, top 25. All right, this is for me. All right. But, because I have thank you, excuse me, good morning, how much, sorry. And then I put, I'm here to pick up a Yandex package. I'll explain all this in a minute. The next thing I put is, is this the right place? 
The next phrase I included, do you speak English? After that, does anyone here speak English? Actually, no, I'm sorry, I got the list wrong. Because I, I put it in a separate, it's kind of spaced out. I should have gone to another column. All right, I'm going to redo this. Okay. Top 25. Thank you, excuse me, good morning, how much, sorry, station names. Again, I'll explain this in a minute. Major street names, major plaza names, landmarks. Short bio and interview material. Okay, that's the column thing. After that, go ahead and I'm here to pick up a Yandex package. Is this the right place? Do you speak English? Does anyone here speak English? I used to think, where's the bathroom? Was the thing? It is it. Okay. It's not even didn't even make the list. So that's telling you how much I've changed that because you're always gonna have your eye out for a bathroom. Right? And you're only gonna frequent place where you have access to a decent bathroom. You're gonna have to take my word for <laughs> that's a very important thing for a foreigner. Okay, I'm just going to have to take my word for it. Okay. Um, yeah, you're not going to bother trying to ask someone questions. All right, you got a language barrier. You, you need a bathroom. You're not going to bother trying to ask it. You're just going to know where the, the bathroom is. All right. You just take my word for it. All right. Uh, another thing. After I got rid of that notion that where's the bathroom is the number one thing, I used to think how much. It was replaced, where's the bathroom was replaced by how much, as far as what I thought was the, it's not even. Because how much, if you're a budget traveler and you're really pinching every penny, you're never going to bother with that question. Okay. Really, maybe if you're comparing something, but probably not. Because, yeah. If it's actually going to affect whether you're going to buy it or not, you're not even going to buy it. Okay. Um. You're going to end up doing stuff like, how much would I be willing to pay for this if I was back at the States? And you're going to have that price in your head. And you're going to make that conversion. And you're going to go to the register. And if they give you something that's higher than that, you're just going to say no and walk away. Okay? Okay. This is budget traveling thing. And this... Top 25, it's a very personal thing. So I'm just explaining to you my my own top 25 list. So I discovered how much, although it is an important question, it's not the most important phrase. Alright. But actually it is the most important question, just not the most important phrase. Just, it's such a situational thing. If I've got to ask, I'm just not going to buy it. Okay, that's how tight-fisted I am when I'm traveling. Hopefully the situation will change, but right at this point in time, if I've got to ask, I'm not even going to bother buying it. And so that's, that's very situational. Like I said, this is so personal. What's the top 25? Then? That depends on you and your situation. Completely. Okay? So thank you. Yeah. Because since you don't really speak the language, you can come off as being pretty rude if you don't exchange even one word. Especially if you're in a culture where 
people at, at least exchange a few words, right? Well, but I'll just there and leave kind of thing. So the thank you is to kind of take the edge off, especially in a culture where people exchange a few words. Just it's a given that you're going to exchange a few words if you're dealing with a person. Just out of common decency, if that's the culture. Being able to say thank you just made the top of the list. Unless you don't mind really trying to, unless you're trying to offend people, you know? So yeah, that actually became the number one thing. All right? Excuse me. Yeah, that's also a situational thing. Uh, good morning. Yeah, Russians, when they interact with each other, they're really very much more sociable than Americans tend to be. So it's it's a more so, so yeah. So even though you don't speak a word of Russian, just these things end up being significant. And then how much is actually number four. And sorry. You see, as a foreigner, you can get very defensive, especially budget traveling, because you're just in an awkward situation. You don't know what the heck you're doing. So your, your social situations are always awkward, so you can really get defensive. So just saying sorry can be like, it can rub you the wrong way because you're already Kind of jagged <laughs> on edge so you don't feel like extending any courtesies because you're already you've already had enough kind of thing so but it is important and when the situation becomes sensitive you ought to be able at least be capable of being gracious even though all your patience is already gone and you don't have one gracious ounce of graciousness left, you should be capable of it. Okay? So, yeah, that made the top group. Okay, and back to more practical considerations. Station names. Just to be able to use the public transportation system. You may not know any other word, but if you go to an employee and you say the station name and you can pronounce it correctly, at least they can point. All right? So being able to say station names, very important. Major street names, kind of the same thing. If you find yourself on a bus, which... If you find yourself on a bus and you don't speak the language, you're pretty darn brave. Okay. <laughs> So, kudos, congratulations, it takes guts. You ought to be able to say major names. You ought to be able to go up to the, the driver and say, you know, say, you know, in a questioning way, like uh, Main Street, you know, just so, ah, oh, that was two blocks away, and he'll pull over and you know, you know, whatever. Just so the other person can point. All right, so whatever. Major plaza names, landmarks, the same concept, okay? At least they can point you in the general direction. Yeah. Um, short bio and interview material. Yeah, that's more in depth kind of thing. But I mean, if you're trying to extend your vocabulary, being able to explain yourself is a good thing. Okay? Uh, you, you know, when you're a budget traveler, you sometimes have to force yourself to be gracious. But if you have to force yourself to be gracious and you're not even capable of expressing yourself in a way that allows you to even get close to that state, you're going to be in real trouble. <laughs> you know, it's just, make things easier on yourself. 
you may not feel like being gracious, but at least be capable of it. So when you're extending your vocabulary, that ought to be somewhere on the top of the list. Okay, so when you're thinking, hmm, what words should I focus on? Again, you may not feel like being gracious, but you should be capable of it. All right. The challenges of budget travel, believe me, it's going to wear your patience out. Okay, so you got to... <sighs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It can be harsh. Um, I'm here to pick up a yen next. Okay, this was this is my particular. This was a situation I ran actually ran into, which is why it made the list. Okay. Um, yeah, budget traveling. I was trying to save on an order when I you know, made the Yandex. I didn't want to pay for delivery, so I. When I put in the order, I went to I put in the option of uh, picking it up at a local postal post office. Except nobody at the post office spoke any English. Okay, and no employee at, at, because if it wasn't for some nice old lady that was able to speak English and tell me what the heck was going on, I'd still be standing there. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, um, don't be that courageous. Go ahead and pay extra for the delivery if you really have to. You will need the language. You will have, or, or have enough data on your phone and be, like, an expert on using the translator and be very accustomed to having prolonged exchanges back and forth using them because yeah but if you're really doing the budget trap that's going to wear away real thin just pay the little extra it's going to be worth the money believe me to pay the extra for the delivery it's not uh, yeah wait to wait till you can throw down a little better with your language skills. It, uh, it wasn't worth it, but whatever. Yeah, I ended up canceling the order and then ordering it again, having it delivered, because that was a that was complete fiasco. Okay, do you speak English? Does anyone here speak English? You see, this is nonsense, because what actually happens is you just say English, and they just shake their head and that's it. Or they, they point at someone else, at a, a co-worker, and then you go and speak English with them. Do you speak English? If you're going to bother doing a whole sentence thing, this is, means you're truly trying to force yourself to extend your vocabulary. Because all that is not necessary. Okay? Or you're trying to be extremely polite and show that you are making very concerted effort and making a full sentence out of this because you, you would not say this as a foreigner, okay? You would just say English. And if they speak English, they'll understand you. And if they don't, whatever. Yeah. So this is like really pushing it. This is at least getting to the point just knowing beforehand that you're going to be budget traveling you're not going to have any patience left but in order to keep the international incidences down to a bare minimum down to a minimum at least be capable of being gracious <laughs> at certain times okay so that's that's what that is and it's also just trying to increase your vocabulary. Right? Just get that little extra practice. Because, yeah, it's harsh. But your traveling is not fun. It's a real ordeal, okay? So, yeah.
Okay, and I put little notations here because I'm trying to force myself to focus on just conversational skills. And I'm trying to avoid everything else as much as I possibly can. So I put things like uh, alphabet and I put an arrow on the days of the week, months, one to 10 written out. This is my plan of how I'm going to learn the alphabet. By learning how to spell out the days of the week, the months of the year, and the numbers, one to 10. And then use them whenever I have to think about how to convert it until I get to the point when I'm not converting anymore and I just, you know, whatever. You know, one step at a time, right? Uh, but I put a little notation here, uh, not necessary, but, and you know, now it is necessary. This, this whole thing with the Yandex thing and having to double check the thing. If you're serious about learning a language, your language material is your lifeline. It is what, what you're going to be engaging with. All right, if you can't trust the language material out there, you definitely have to be able to confirm that it's accurate. All right, there's just too much out there. So that little notation to myself, not necessary, but I'm going to have to change that. It is necessary. Not only is it necessary, but it's not number one, but it's definitely a close number two. Okay, Yandex would actually have to be number one. My ability to use Yandex out of the top 25 is number one. The alphabet, well, having an alphabet chart something like this is a very, very close second. Or a co, or right there. It, sh it shapes, it uh, shares top billing with the index. Okay? Just so you can confirm the language material you're using is effective. Alright? You don't need to add any barriers that already are being thrown out there. Okay? Again, I'm not saying for sure, for sure, it's all intentional, but. There's enough BS out there, so know how to use the index, okay? Which means you're going to have to have a chart until you learn the alphabet. Have a chart available for you right there at, on hand. So, yeah. And actually, that now becomes like the last item on my top 25. I call it a top 25. It never makes it to actually 25 things, but you know, just, just that category of what's the most important thing to know. All right, that's what I call top 25. So the last item on my top 25 now is learning the alphabet. Um, having the chart shares top billing with Yandex, okay? But learning the alphabet, so I don't need to have the chart on me all the time, that's the last item on my top 25. That's a becomes an essential thing now. So that's, because I didn't even want to bother with the Russian alphabet until I was conversational already. That's no longer the case, okay? Since you really can't trust anything, you have to verify everything now. Yandex has become essential, and now so has the alphabet. So now that's got just got kicked up there. Uh, the other, other thing I put that notation, not necessary, but is the uh, in-flight sentences that I mentioned on the previous video and how I edited it and whatever. You select the ones that are re really relevant for you. 
and tailor them even further than that to really personalize it so it's really meaningful for you. Motivation is so important, okay? It's especially in the beginning. You really, and you really have to stay focused because you're going to be bombarded with so many possibilities as far as the infinite amount of language skills and features, all right? If you really are serious about being conversational, you just have to focus in on those things that are going to make you conversational. And don't worry about all the other stuff because you can spend a lifetime with a language. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to bother with all that. So, all I'm focused on now is being conversational and so, yeah. That's um uh, that's what this video is about. Staying focused on conversational skills. Because you will have to force yourself. Because there's so many amusing ways to be diverted. Okay? There's just so many flashy things, things that beep and whiz and flash and all. And it's all wonderful and so much fun and whatever. You want to fun go play with some other way. This is, if, if you want your conversational skills, you really, really have to force yourself to stay focused. All right, so. May not be as fun as all the other little toys out there, but if this is re really important to you, you're just gonna have to force yourself to stay focused. All right, so I wanted to throw this out there. It's already over 30 minutes, but this is really important. You gotta force yourself to stay on task, right? Because there's just way too much BS out there. Okay, so that's that little extra. And that's just showing you how subjective all this thing is. But after you've traveled a while and kind of somewhat familiar with the culture, not really, but how you interact with it essentially, at least, without the language skills, you really can try to tailor your approach to acquiring the language skills you want to acquire. Okay? This would probably not work for anybody else. See, that's why I don't like giving too many details. That's why I don't like filling in the blanks. Because if I fill in all the blanks, Nobody would be able to use that method but me. You've got to fill in the blanks yourself. You've got to personalize it. You've got to make it meaningful for your situation and your personality and all that. Because it's not going to work if you're using someone else's thing. Very subjective. Okay. But very important to stay focused. Just... Try not to get distracted with all the other possibilities. Just stay focused on what you want to do, what you're trying to do. Okay. All right, that's it. Um, good luck, and uh, again, try to stay safe, try to stay healthy, and I will talk to you later. Take care.